Edward Snowden, he's uh, petitioned, uh, he's, he's petitioning Washington to come back. Yeah, he wants clemency. He's in the New York Times today asking for clemency from the Washington. Uh, I guess, you know, the uh, speaking of shine wearing off of things, the shine must have worn off of Russia for him since, you know, Russia is still a horrible place to live. It hasn't really, it hasn't uh, recovered uh, much from the... From the decades of abuse, it was un- it was uh, it was it was forced to go on through uh, you know under the uh, rule by atheism. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, if you want to find out what happens with, with, when the atheists take over, look at what happened with yeah. Russia, folks. Well, well but, we're going to yeah, try but, we're going to try it down here, and now that we have a leader that can help us, I, th- I think atheism is going to work down here. It didn't work in Russia. It hasn't worked in China. It hasn't worked in North Korea or anywhere else. But I, th- I think it's going to work down here because I mean Obama's brilliant. He surrounded himself with brilliant people, so it'll work. Well, this. Listen, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, uh, the um, the guy. I got. I got to tell you guys a story that'll blow your mind. This happened to me uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was coming up from uh, from from the United States. I do a lot of traveling, as you know. I was, I was coming up from the U.S. back into Canada through Buffalo, right. from uh, over the Peace Bridge there, from Buffalo to Fort Erie, Ontario. Right. And I'm coming up through there, and I stop at the duty free as I'm going into Canada. I'm trying to paint a picture for you guys here. Okay. I'm going into Canada. I stop at the duty-free uh, on the U.S. side. Mm-hmm. That's where people buy their booze and cigarettes and all that. So that's I you were buying. Wait, 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 wait! You were buying booze and cigarettes. I was not buying booze. <laughs> oh, and cigarettes. oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not against. I mean, I'm against smoking because because uh, of because of the addictive nature of it. But I'm not against wine and beer and so oh, on. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I know. I, I know. I, I'm not against that. I'm not one of those uh, people. I, I'm, I'm just not. I I'm know pu- you're I'm, not I'm, either. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm pulling you. Now, I don't drink wine or beer, but I'm not uh, right. opposed to somebody that wants to have a glass of wine with their meal. I'm, I'm not. But right. I, was, I was just pulling your chain. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. But I, I realized as I was coming up to the border that I had to go to U.S. Customs because I had some business to take care of there. I could not cross into Canada until I took care of this business with U.S. Customs. Right. And the only place to park is in the duty-free parking lot. Right. So I parked my vehicle there, and it had been a number of years I had done this particular exercise. So what I did was I started walking through the U.S. Customs compound. Right. Right? So here's this Canadian. He gets out of his vehicle. He's walking across the U.S. Customs compound, the tarmac there. And, I, and all of a sudden, I look to my right, and I see all these 18-wheelers uh, coming at me. And then I suddenly realized I'm in the path of these enormous behemoths, and I'm in their lanes. Yeah. So now I start running. Now, the, now, mistake number one was starting to walk across the U.S. Customs compound. That was right. mistake number one. Yes. Mistake number two was running across the yes. U.S. Customs compound. Yes, you didn't have a backpack so, on, did you? I have a beard right now, Carl. You don't know this about me, but right now I have a beard. Yeah, no, but well, I, I, and I said, but you didn't have a backpack on, did you? No, but but no, but uh, but in, in in that in that similar vein, I sort of look like a jihadi light. Right okay, now. okay, okay. <laughs> because my beard is, is sort of is sort of there, and it's, well, it, it's I sport it pretty well. It's kind of that Chuck Norris look. You yeah, know? yeah. But uh, but uh, here I am. Okay, now picture this in your minds, guys. I have just left the the duty free area. I'm running across the the U.S. Customs compound. I'm running across with a jihadi light look on my face trying to start, keep from being run over by these 18-wheelers. I mean, that place went crazy. Yeah. I, I, by the time I got to the end of that compound tarmac, I had 20 guys with guns pointed at me. Well, good for them. Way to go, That's America. Right. <laughs> and there, there is no way, there is no way I was getting into the United States of America. There was no way that was happening. These guys had their guns drawn, and they were looking at me saying, what are you, where are you going yeah. and what do you want if you had right start now. if you had put on a turban or if yeah. you had spoken mexican it, it, they would have welcomed you right in well i suppose that carl i suppose that three words now i i knew right i, I you could feel it in the air uh-huh. 20 guys have their guns pointed at you i could feel it in the air that if i didn't choose my next words very carefully yes. this was not going to end well for yes, me yes yes Right. Yes. And I just knew. I just knew. So that you didn't say. You didn't say Alhu Akbar or nothing like that. I was just going to say three <laughs> words. Three <laughs> magic words would have gotten me killed right there. <laughs> right. Would have at the very least lost both my kneecaps. Yeah. And those were the words. Allahu Akbar. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Now, now with the man in the in the Oval Office, they they might have said, "Welcome, my brother. Welcome." 
No, no, no. You gotta understand. Now, I I cross the border a lot. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you guys something about the border. The U, the U.S. border. Uh, political correctness does not play into their mindset at all. Well, good. Not at all. I mean, it pl- it plays into the the uh, the uh, the college and the university camp. The, the college and university camp I yeah. in America, the camp and, the, and, and Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. and all of that. But let me tell you guys something: the, the borders of the United States of America, whether it's the Mexican border or the Canadian border, I'm telling you, those guys are the front lines of defense for the for the country. And political correctness does they, these guys profile in every possible way you can profile. They're profiling. And what you're trying to say is they don't play. I'm telling you. Uh, if I uh, now this was this was a very palpable seriousness about yeah. this event. Yeah, these guys were not messing around. I, if I would have reacted one wrong move on my part, if I would have reached my hand around to my back, yeah. I would have been shot dead on sight. Yep. I just know it would have been happened. That would have happened. Yep. 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 So that is my near death experience with the uh, Department of Homeland Security. So t- so tell me, I've got a couple of questions for you now. Uh, yeah. right, okay. Number one. Did you soil your clothing? No, I did not. Okay. I just wanted to know. All right. Number two, what was your body posture, your body language when all the guns came down on you? What was your next move? I mean, you didn't reach around behind your back. What was your body posture? Uh, it was very submissive, hands in front. Uh huh. They asked for ID. I, I just happened to have my passport in my hand. Uh, if I had it, if I did have to reach around for it, I would have been ordered to the ground. Yeah. But because I had my passport in my hand, he reached out for it. He said, give me your ID. I gave it to him. And next thing you know, Carl, it, it was like a Monty Python skit. Yeah. Honest to God, that, it, it, was, it, was, it was that. It was such a contrast. You know, once the guy looked at my, my passport, he knew that he, he understood that I spoke fluent English. You know, they're profiling for all this stuff. Sure. If, if, I, if I sound like I have a, a, a Saudi accent, you know, you combine that with the beard, and me running across the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You combine all those things together, there's all kinds of red flags going up. Here's this guy with his beard running across the parking lot. What in the world's going on? Yeah. These guys come out, guns drawn. Where, where are you going? Where do you think you're going? Who are you? What do you want? And all these questions, you know, they, yeah. they do all the, they ask, they're trained to do all this stuff. It was all very well handled. I was not getting away with anything. But... Once they realized that I was only there to do business, I screwed up. I, sh- I said, listen, I-, I totally blew this. I should not have run across the parking lot. I'm very sorry. I'm a complete bonehead. I'm just here to, to cancel out this piece of paperwork. Uh, if you could just please help me out. Next thing you know, they're like, oh, well, come on in here. Let's deal with this. This is not a problem. We'll just take care of this. Five minutes later, Carl, I was gone. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, I was, very, I was very submissive. I respect these people. Yeah. You know, even though I don't like some of them, and I know some of them personally, I don't like some of them, but, you know, I respect the badge. I know that it's a tough job, and those guys are there to protect. Right. I mean, they're, they're there to protect the United States of America. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Re- Mexico or Canada. Yeah, I appreciate, I, I appreciate that report from the front line. And I'll tell you, there's one thing about it. You don't have a Saudi accent. There's one thing about it. <laughs> 